This video learns you how to build a project and task management application in BaseRow. After defining our needs, we start with setting up the database structure using the appropriate field type for any piece of information. We enhance functionality by integrating formulas for improved efficiency and ensure data integrity and consistency by linking related tables together. Once the database structure has been set up, we add filters, colors, and multiple view types such as a Kanban to provide valuable insights into the data. This empowers informed decision making and streamlines workflow management. Let's start with focusing on what we actually need. A good approach is writing this down in a sentence and mark all the nouns. Those are good candidates to become a table. In this scenario, we have clients with projects that are divided in tasks. Next, think about the properties or attributes you need for each table. This will become the fields or columns of your table. For example, a task has a certain status, start date, expected workload, and so on. Finally, identify relations between tables. Each column that is also a table will probably be a relationship. This is a very basic model, but changes are inevitable in all applications. Therefore, it's better to start small and add functionality afterwards rather than spending time on unused features. Let's dive into Bezero to create those tables, fields, and relations. I am going to create a new database, offer it a name, Project Management. I have by default a table that I rename to Clients, and each table has by default three fields, but I removed the last two because I don't need them here. I add a field for the email of my client, also one for the phone number, and a single line text field for the address. Instead of typing the clients, I will import a file, a CSV file that contains all the information I want about my clients. And I can map the fields from my CSV file with the ones from my database. Now I remove the first two rows because they are empty. Next table is the projects table. So I will rename notes to description. And my active field will become budget and I change the type to a number. I can add decimals, but this is not required for my budget. Next field will be a file field that contains the contract. A uh, contract will be a PDF file, but actually can be any file. So if I add a new project, a social media campaign with a budget of let's say 7,500, I can add a PDF document, but actually it can be any kind of file that I can add to my project. Next step is linking my project to a client. And this is done with the link to table field. So I name it client, I select my clients table and I create it in two ways. So client is linked to a project and a project to a client. I select a client, Alice for example. And if I check the clients table, I notice that the project is linked to her. And it's actually linked. So if I change the description of the project, for example, on all major platforms, and I check the project table, I see that my project is changed. Finally, task table also has a name. Task also has a description. And the active field will become a link to my projects field. Again, with a link to table. And let's add, for example, a competitor's study as a task. And I link this to my social media campaign table. Let's add a couple of more fields, a single select field that will indicate the status of my uh, task. And the status can be not started. It can also be in progress or a task can be completed. And I can set an appropriate color for each status of my tasks. Next field is a date field that indicates the start of my project. And I have three possible date formats, European, US, or ISO. So if I set a status and select the date, I notice that the date is in the ISO format. Next field is my workload in days. So the days I estimate to work on the project. And I also will create a collaborators field. So task needs to be assigned by someone. And the collaborators field holds all the users of your base row instance and the members of the database. You can check this in the admin panel if you have admin rights. 
and each of those members can be assigned to a certain task. They immediately get a notification in their dashboard and also an email when a, a task is assigned to them. If you don't want to use your workspace members, there's an alternative in setting up a table for all your staff members. Final field will be a created on field and the created on field will hold the date and time that the task is created into the database. Formulas allow to perform calculations, manipulate data and automate processes within databases. They are constructed by one or more functions similar to those that are used in spreadsheets. Let's use them in the tasks and projects table. My first formula will be used to calculate the deadline of a certain task. And I will do this by taking my start date and add the workload in days to it. However, this returns an error message because I cannot add a number to a date. I need to use the function date interval for this. And date interval takes as an argument a number of days. So for example, seven, and it adds seven days to each task. Now, that's not the intention. So I replace seven with my workload in days, but now I have a number and a text. So I concatenate the number and the text together so that it makes one formula. And after completing this, I have a deadline for each task. Next, I want to know how many days to go for a task. It's again a formula. And I will use the date diff function, express it in days, and calculate the difference between now and deadline. Notice that it returns a lot of negative numbers, but this is for tasks that are already completed. So I build in an additional condition. If my status field is different from the text completed, well, in that case, I like to see the difference. In other cases, just show zero. And this is solved. I still have one record with a negative number, but it's in progress. Let's go to the projects table and add some additional fields here. For example, I want to calculate the start date of my project. And I do this with a rollup field to my task table where I take my start date and I want to have the first start date. So the minimum start date of the task of my project. And to calculate the end date of my project, again, a rollup field to my task. And I take the deadline but this time the maximum deadline. And this gives me the interval. I also want to count how many tasks there are for a project. So my task count is a count field to my task table and each project has five tasks. Next, I want to calculate my task completion. So how many tasks are complete? And I use the filter function for this. First argument is what I like to see. Well, I like to see the status. Second argument, which one do I like to see? Well, I like to see the task where my status is equal to completed. And this only shows completed for tasks that are completed. Typo. Okay, but I don't want to see the word completed. I want, for example, to see the name of my task. I can replace it and I see the name, but Actually, all I want to see is the number of tasks that are completed. And I use the count function for this. Let's calculate the completion ratio of the task. So how many percentage of the tasks for that project are completed? Well, I simply divide task completed by my task count. And I multiply by 100 to get percentage. There are a lot of decimals. Let's remove the decimals with the round function and say I want to see two decimals. If I want to see percentage sign after it, I use the concat function again, add the percentage, and now I get my ratio with percentage. We enhanced our database with a lot of formulas offering us more intelligence. So let's add some views for even more details. A view on a table shows the data from that table with specific filters, sorting, and grouping options. It allows users to see data in a customizable format tailored to their preferences. This supports effective data visualization, aiding users in making informed decisions and optimizing their workflow efficiency. Each table has by default a single grid view. Let's rename this to All Tasks and let's sort our default view based on the start date, 
and I will put the most recent start date on top. I'm going to create a new grid view for the tasks that are in progress. So this view will only contain tasks in progress. I sort them again based on the start date and I add a filter to them. And this filter will only show records where the status is in progress. The other records has not disappeared. They are still in my old task view, but I have a view specific for tasks that are in progress. I'm going to duplicate this view and rename it for tasks that are grouped by their project. I'm going to group by, but I cannot use the project field. And this is because project is a linked field. So I create a new field for the project name. And this will be a formula. I will look up the name for the project and I will use the join function to convert a potential list of projects into a single text. And this single text field this can be used in a group by. So I can select my project name and all my tasks are now grouped by project. Bezo had a lot of different view types like uh, Kanban for example. And I will use this Kanban to show all my tasks stacked by their status. I can customize each card showing some fields like the start date, the assignee, the deadline. I can also click on a task and I can change the details or add comments to them. I can also drag and drop the task to change their status. Another interesting view here is the calendar view, where I will show all my tasks in a calendar. I will do this based on their start date, and I add some coloring to it. I use the color of the status for the left border, so that I immediately see which tasks are in progress and which are completed. Let's also add some coloring to my all tasks view. I'm going to use a condition and I'm going to use a red background for all the tasks where the days to go is lower than zero. In other words, tasks that are beyond the deadline, but still not completed. This immediately offers a nice visual overview. Next, my task will be a personal view. So this view is only accessible by me. Other users cannot see it. And I will filter the assignee to be myself so that I have an overview of all my tasks. I can also sort them, for example, on the status that is completed. I can do with it whatever I want because it's my personal view that is not accessible to others. So now we have enriched our database with views. We have a nice project template. This video covered only the very basics of what's possible with Bezero. Every organization is unique and it's up to you to customize the database with fields, formulas and views that are relevant for your business. There are plenty of resources available through Bezero.io that can help you in setting up a project management system tailored to your needs. And don't forget about our helpful community of Bezero users that are always available to answer any questions that you might have along the way.